The Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is one of the most violent hate groups in America. If someone disrespects you, you have to destroy them, period. This white supremacist gang operates a criminal network from behind their prison bars. You know, I really ain't supposed to do this, but if you disrespect us, we're gonna pay you back. Now they reveal their drug smuggling secrets. What we do is we'll liquefy the methamphetamine and we'll bring it over the border liquefied. Their plans to assassinate a policeman. This cop cold blood murdered him. And one high ranking general is intent to ignite a bloody gang war so he can take control of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. I'm gonna get it, or I'm gonna die trying to get it. Texas has one of the fastest growing prison populations in the country. The number of inmates has tripled in size in the past 20 years. Inside prison walls, some of the most violent inmates belong to the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. What started behind bars has now spread, with nearly 5,000 members running a criminal syndicate both in and outside of prison. The ABT, as it's called, combines the violence of a prison gang, the power and money of organized crime, and Nazi ideology, making them a threat to their own members and to outsiders alike. Since its creation in the 1980s, ABT members have committed murders and kidnappings, attempted bombings, and gained control of part of Texas's multi-million dollar methamphetamine trade. The Styles Unit in Beaumont, Texas, houses one of the most notorious ABT inmates in the Texas prison system. Bobby Adams, a founding member of the ABT, is currently serving life in prison for armed robbery. Adams and a group of white inmates founded the ABT to protect themselves from the other racially divided gangs in Texas prisons. In uh, 85, 86, Texas was the most violent prison system in the United States, you know, and more stabbings per, per capita per inmate uh, than anywhere else. Um, it was pretty bad. It was, you know, it was, they was stabbings on the wreck yard yeah, when we was in population, chow halls, you know, it was, it just, it, you know, a lot of it was racial. My idea was that we couldn't organize the Mexicans, we can't organize the blacks, but we could organize the whites. The ABT is governed by a council of five generals, collectively known as the Wheel. Each of these generals controls a region in the gang's primary territories, Texas and New Mexico. It's set up on a military type deal, but it's really three things for the membership. The spiritual part of it is the brotherhood, financial part of it as far as making money and, and physical. We come together to counter any type of problems, you know. Because it's outnumbered by non-white gangs in prison, the ABT operates on pure terror. They believe the more ruthless the violence, the stronger the message. If you mess with us, we were going to get you, right? Hey, The ABT lures in new prospects with the promise of protection. Recruits are schooled to believe in Nazism and the superiority of whites. Tattoos of swastikas and SS lightning bolts indicate their allegiance. Gang members must earn the right to wear these bolts by committing acts of violence for the group. This ABT member has agreed to speak as long as he can hide his identity. The cuts on his face are from what he refers to as an accident the night before. He has been an ABT member for over 10 years and believes he's defending his heritage. Our race is being bred out of existence right now. In Texas, we're now the minority. It's the breeding out of who we are. 
you know, we're warriors. I've been a warrior my whole life. I'll be a warrior till the day I die. ABT is vicious. <laughs> There's a vicious part of it that is murders, and they're gonna get their respect, come whatever it takes. They're gonna get their respect. You know, so you better step light. <laughs> The ABT demands total loyalty and has a code of allegiance, a blood code, blood in and blood out. ABT first started, the blood in, blood out was you had to kill somebody to get in. It was straight murder. At one time in the Texas Penitentiary, there was a murder, at least one murder every week. Each new member must prove himself to the Brotherhood by committing acts of violence. I know that every one of my brothers is down. I know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, you know? I know that they had to do something. They had to prospect, and prospect is hard. It's hard, because any, any, any brother could just walk up to you and say, hey, go whoop that toad over there. And you're going to go have to whoop that black guy. You're going to have to. You have no choice. There's not a no, maybe. You go do it right now. The rising level of violence associated with the ABT has captured the attention of the Anti-Defamation League, a watchdog group that monitors white supremacists and other hate groups. ABT violence is literal overkill. You know, inmates who have been stabbed 70 times, uh, people whose bodies have been dragged around in full view of either the yard or security cameras, you know, where other people can see. Killings that are meant to make a broader point than just getting rid of the victim. Anti-Defamation League has tracked racist prison gangs for, for quite some time. And one of the reasons we've been spending more time on this is because increasingly these groups are present not only in the prisons, but on the streets. And so they're causing more problems than before. And so we've been devoting more time to them than before. Racist prison gangs combine the criminal know-how of organized crime with the ideologically motivated convictions of a hate group. You do see some crossover, for example, between racist prison gangs and other types of white supremacists. You do see the presence of hate crimes among their criminal activities. But the ABT have unusual priorities for a white supremacist organization. They will work with black and Mexican gangs if it means turning a profit. Their organized crime aspect comes first, and ideology comes second. With the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, for example... <laughs> ...they're even explicit about this in their official documents, that the business comes first. They will make a strategic alliance with, for example, a Mexican gang for some particular reason, like control of the drug trade in a prison or some mutual benefit. I'm about making money and, uh, you know, hating somebody, it don't make me a dime. I don't care if it's a little green man from Mars, if he wants to do some business and he treats me with respect, I'm gonna treat him with respect, you know. The actual amount of profit linked to ABT drug trafficking is unknown, but last year alone, nearly $150 million worth of meth was seized in Texas. And as the ABT makes money, it also attracts new recruits. ABT has got 120 units in this system now, and they've been recruiting people from state jails and county jails and anybody that, I mean, they're just picking up anybody and everybody, you know. But as the organization grows, it becomes harder to maintain order. The rich pickings can tempt ABT members to overthrow their current leaders and take control for themselves. And one ABT general has decided to do exactly that. I'm not scared of them. I don't fear them. This is the end of a chapter and the beginning of a new chapter. 
And next, revenge breeds revenge as a policeman becomes a target. And the ABT goes to war. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, 340 kilometers west of the Texas border, the city's regional correctional facility houses one of the commanding generals of the ABT, James Thompson. This is the first time he has spoken on camera, but Thompson has a warning for anyone who would betray his own trust. You know, I really ain't supposed to do this, but the other generals, you know, they're, they're behind me. But, you know, if you disrespect us, we're gonna pay you back. Sometimes it can get pretty messy. Thompson is plotting to destroy the current ABT leadership and take sole control of the gang. When I set out to do something, I'm not gonna let it stop me. It's like, you know, a wolf. Even though he's a predator, if he gets trapped, he hits you off his own foot to release himself, you know? If I really want something bad enough, I'm gonna get it, or I'm gonna die trying to get it. Convicted of multiple crimes, including theft, burglary, assault, and dealing drugs, Thompson has spent nearly a quarter of his life behind bars. He joined the all-white Aryan Brotherhood 11 years ago when he first went into prison. When you go to prison in Texas, there's a lot of things that go on inside. When somebody comes over and tries to steal from me and I try to do something about it, and then I get clicked on by 10 or 11 guys, I want somebody there that's gonna be able to back me up. Some of the guys that uh, represented ABT were the more strong, more dominant white folks in prison. And I'm a natural leader, so those are the people I, I was attracted to. Within the Brotherhood, Thompson quickly rose through the ranks. You gotta prove yourself, you know? So I'm willing to stand and fight for what I believe in. It's a matter of life and death in here. That's what people don't realize. Thompson thinks of himself as a warrior preparing for battle. Clashes are common between rival gangs, but Thompson has now turned to fighting within his own organization. He and his fellow generals want complete control of the ABT and its money. They went and formed their own wheel and, and just created a big old mess, you know. It's like a bunch of sharks that are feeding frenzy. They're out for themselves, you know, and they're out there. They ain't paying no attention to nobody. According to Thompson, the old leadership is taking the ABT in the wrong direction by betraying their brothers in order to turn a profit. Thompson's vision for the future of the ABT is to make more money by keeping its members out of prison and on the streets, projecting the image that the ABT is a legitimate organization. Thompson plans his takeover of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas from the isolation of his segregated cell block. Even though he's locked up, he uses a network of ABT members on the street to conduct gang business. The federal government has even accused him of allegedly approving a murder from inside his cell. Inmates have a right to communicate with the outside, but the prison monitors all his messages. If his communications are linked to any illegal activity, he can be prosecuted. But there are ways to get around these measures. My mail's under extreme scrutiny. You know, we just don't write stuff out in plain black and white. We use a lot of metaphors and stuff like that. But it's just a, a lingo that we have, that we understand each other. And Thompson has devised other ways of getting past the prison scrutiny. You can send messages with people that are getting out. You know, uh, not all the COs are, you know, there's dirty cops inside there. So, I mean, you know, we send letters out through them. We can, you know, messages out through them, things like that. Thompson passes orders along to his captains on the outside through these coded messages. 
This is the makeshift headquarters of the gang in a Texas panhandle town. This is how Thompson reaches the outside world from inside his cell. Due to the ABT's military-like structure, any communication from Thompson is treated as law by his subordinates. Yeah, I gotta see my shield. The senior captain, known as Lucky, reports directly to Thompson and the other ABT generals. So you follow the order, period. Whether you think it's right or wrong, it don't matter. You follow the order. You do what you're told, when you're told and how you're told. Lucky lost his leg in a gunfight. He joined the gang after his arrest for drugs and aggravated assault. I've been pretty mean in my life. I hit a confidential informant in the head with my crutch and knocked his ear off. And when the fight was over, I put his ear in my pocket. And later that night, when they arrested me for aggravated assault and booked me into jail, I laid his ear on the counter. I'm a part of a family that has some hard, hard men in it. Lucky and his city captain, Peanut, are ABT members who have earned the right to display gang signs and tattoos. It's the ace and the deuce, so which is AB. The only thing that I have as far as anything significant as far as ABT is my life date, which is 2707. The life date marks the day Peanut was finally accepted into the gang. That's the day I become a brother. That's the day that started for me as, as a whole. It's my life date. Then I got ABT on that arm. And a swastika with a five-point crown on it, representing the five-point wheel. And then on my stomach, it says 100% honky. And then my patch. Believe me, some of the meanest men in the world are in Brotherhood of Texas. Back in the Albuquerque Regional Correctional Center, Thompson is chained to the wall while he uses the phone. A correctional officer listens to every word of his conversation with Lucky. Hello? Hello. What's going on? What's up, bro? Just thought I'd call and see how y'all were doing. Have you heard from Thumper? Yes, sir. Right so we need... Thompson wants to make sure Lucky is staying in contact with the other generals. Thumper and Hawk. All right, I'll get a hold of them for you. He's trying to talk about some paperwork that relates to their takeover without the guard understanding. Why have you got that struggle written on? I'll get you that paperwork um, within the next day or so, okay? I've kind of been lagging behind a little bit, but. So we need to get on it as soon as we can? We needed it done a while back, but. However, uh, as soon as possible. All right, brother, much love. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Lucky not only carries out Thompson's verbal orders, he also oversees gang correspondence, receiving up to 80 letters a week from Thompson and other ABT officers in prison. That's how we have to communicate. I mean, so many of us are in prison, and especially the upper rank right now, they're all in prison. Letters and phone calls from the gang leaders in prison are passed on by captains like Lucky, who send them on to members across the state. And I'm just telling them, you know, a lot of the stuff that's going on now is coming to an end so we can move on to the next stage. The next stage means that Thompson is ready to make his move against the existing leadership of the ABT. While a Brotherhood member on the inside reveals the secrets of the gang's deadly meth trade, the ABT on the outside declares war on the police. And Thompson could soon be joining them as his release date comes closer. The Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is one of the most violent white supremacist gangs in the US. But in the world of high-stakes drug trafficking, their white supremacist beliefs often come second to their desire to make money. The highest percentage of their income is from methamphetamine. Because of its centralized location, 
Houston is a major distribution hub for the meth trade, which also makes it the center of power and profit for the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. Millions of dollars in drugs and drug money flow through the region each year. In the Harris County Jail near Houston, Chevy Parnell is serving time for robbery. Parnell has been in the Brotherhood for 15 years. Yeah, I'm in for life. I'm bolted in. It means I, I shed blood for the family and uh, shed blood for the organization. I, I'm in the enforcer branch. It's more or less the police arm of the, the organization. Parnell is loyal to the existing leadership. He's trying to stop James Thompson's bid to take over the gang. The Aryan Brotherhood of Texas split, all right? And we're trying to get the bros that split back in the line. So we're in, we're in a civil war. It's kind of bloody. There's been several murders. Like Thompson, Parnell is segregated from the prison population. I'm considered a high-value target because I've been in, affiliated with the Brotherhood for so long. So uh, they, they segregate me in order to keep me from hurting anybody else or to keep me from being hurt myself. Parnell, like Thompson, orchestrates his business from his cell as prison officials monitor his communications with the outside. He could be prosecuted for any illegal business he conducts, so he uses code to evade the guards and relies on members on the outside to keep the lines of communication open. I see them phones over there? They got a phone that rolls around to each, each cell. We call it the cell phone. <laughs> and uh, I use a three-way call to whoever I need to call. And uh, I have a, a sergeant at arms and uh, several foot soldiers under me. The Brotherhood is getting rich by muscling in on the methamphetamine trade in Texas, and Parnell is right in the thick of it. My area of expertise is I, I cook methamphetamine here in Texas. And they're importing it by the ton. We do a lot of business with the Mexican cartels. What we do is we'll liquefy the methamphetamine, and we'll bring it over the border liquefied because uh, it doesn't smell as much when it's liquefied. And we don't have too much problems with the cartels, because either we're doing business with them or we do it under the radar. According to Parnell, the gang traffics meth through a large network that includes outlaw motorcycle clubs and other white supremacist gangs. They often finance the transactions by robbing banks. A lot of times we'll have bulk shipments come across. A pound of methamphetamine goes for about $35,000. And we'll have several hundred pounds come across. We'll have to get with the upper members in order to secure that much money, or we'll have to, what's called, hit a lick. We'll, uh, hit a bank to secure that much funds in order to pay. Or we get it on more or less a layaway basis. They'll give it to us and allow us to pay it off in installments. As we sell it, then we pay the money back slowly. Methamphetamine is a manufactured drug that acts like speed. It's extremely addictive. Excessive use causes paranoia and can fuel violent and outrageous crimes. This video shot from a hidden camera inside a stolen car shows a man high on meth as he evades police. The drug is dangerous, and for the ABT, extremely profitable. But it causes huge problems for law enforcement. The town of Corpus Christi is a major stop on the ABT's meth trafficking route, from Mexico to their distribution hub in Houston. On the streets of Corpus Christi, Sergeant Paul Lesowski works on a tip he received about a dangerous Aryan Brotherhood leader who just got out of prison. His nickname is Spider. He's known to deal in meth or ice. 
we've been trying to apprehend him where the lights, where you're shining the light at. So that one right there. Yep, number 10. Nothing. Unfortunately, Mama has been protecting him. Not giving him up, not not telling if, he, if he's home. So. Then let's go check out the uh, the the mobile home parks. All right, man. I'll meet you out there. Uh, I believe he has several felonies on his on his record. Actually, he just got out of jail. In fact, for I believe it was for uh, uh, possession of controlled substance. And also, I believe he had some weapons with him as well. You want to go in and see what we find? Sounds good. Uh, there's some banditos that live out here, and there's also some 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 ABT, and it's kind of their little they like to call you know compound or stronghold. Um, everybody knows everybody in this mobile home park, and. The person that we were talking about earlier also lives out here. And the thing is, is that he can pretty much, if, if he ever gets in trouble or if he ever gets to be wanted, he can move from one of these mobile home part, you know, mobile home to mobile home and we could never find him. So it's really, it's kind of difficult trying to <clears throat> get in here and, and kind of kind of catch him if he doesn't want us to. There is no sign of the suspect. For law enforcement, trying to break the ABT meth trade is a constant battle. Drug crime is ripping apart Texas communities. Was he gang related? I'm not sure. I'm checking that right now. Even the ABT itself is not immune. Rampant drug use is a major source of friction within the gang and causes problems in the ranks. But Thompson wants to eradicate meth use from the ABT entirely. If you're using drugs, I can't trust you. So that's, that's basically why I'm against it. His senior captain, Lucky, enforces the no drug policy on the outside. With black people, it's crack. With Spanish people, it's heroin. With whites, it was methamphetamine. But all it's ever done was put us in prison. I've probably done more than most meth. But I'm done, and like I say, from the top down to me, at least, it's very clear that we're done with dope. Zero tolerance on the dope. It's done. Anybody holding rank in the ABT is not to be on drugs, or I'll take their rank from them. Thompson's no-tolerance stance on drug use is designed to help control profits and his own gang members. The ABT only admits the most ruthless and violent white inmates into the gang. Murderers like Jason Trooper Hankins, who once ran the Dallas region as an ABT general. Today, he's serving a 10-year sentence for murder. Thirty-five-year-old Trooper has been behind bars for over a quarter of his life. Only 18 when he joined the ABT, he is unpredictable and dangerous. In the penitentiary, when I went down, it was a, there was a lot of racial violence. Uh, everybody down in the mid 90s was getting down with gangs. There were some good old, old schooler dudes that, that taught me, you know, uh, schooled me. As a young recruit, Hankins learned how the ABT maintains power through terror. If you cross the gang, they will kill you in a violent and public way. Inside prison and on the street, people fear ABT retribution. One of the worst offenses against the Brotherhood is informing, and it's punishable by death. If you snitch, if you're an informant, I mean, you're automatic. You got an X on your back, a hit on you. On August the 1st, 2006, Trooper and two other gang members turned on an associate they believed had broken the gang's most sacred rule. They feared he was giving police details of gang crimes. 
so the ABT murdered him. The guy was sedated, beat up, took to one location and then took to another location, wrapped up in a chain link fence with center blocks, taken to a pond where he was put into the water and then stabbed in the throat, down the throat with a knife about that long, stuck it down his throat. Dallas police detective John Palmer worked this murder investigation and gathered the evidence that led to Hankins' conviction. They're trying to use terror to frighten people. They, they want to make sure whoever they're dealing with believes that they will carry out any threats they issue. Detective Palmer and the Dallas police have been struggling to contain a rise in ABT violence. I think we can limit them. We can be vigilant. We may slow them down, but I don't think we'll ever stop them. But as police pressure the gang, the ABT fights back. On the night of December the 18th, 2004, sheriff deputies in Cloudcroft, New Mexico, responded to a domestic disturbance call. When the deputies arrived, they confronted an ABT member who had just murdered his pregnant girlfriend. The ABT member shot one of the deputies. We have a shot fired. Bob, you okay? While the deputy searched for his partner, the ABT member opened fire again. Six, six, uh, shots fired. I've got a man down. Oh! Oh, oh. The second deputy wounded the ABT member and after putting him in handcuffs, shot him dead with a bullet to the chest. The killing outraged the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas and they demanded revenge. From within prison, Thompson allegedly composed a coded letter approving the killing of the sheriff's deputy. An ABT meeting was assembled to plan the murder. Undercover federal agents, posing as ABT members, infiltrated the gang and set up a hidden camera. The New Mexico ABT leaders had no idea they were being recorded. The FBI arrested the gang members before they could carry out their plan. They charged two ABT gang members with conspiracy to kill a law enforcement officer. Both men received 10 years in prison. Although James Thompson was accused of writing the letter approving the killing, his trial ended in a hung jury, and he was acquitted of all charges. The FBI foiled this plot, but the ABT has proved they will go after anyone, including the police. Now, a rival white prison gang threatens the ABT and Thompson steals a tactic from his rivals. What's going on? And steers the ABT in a new direction. The Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is a prison gang whose power extends far beyond prison walls. Inside the prisons, the ABT recruits the most violent white men with the promise of making money and belonging to a brotherhood. You gotta handle your business. You have no choice. You have to represent. It gives you something that makes you not want to be a bitch, per se. You know what I mean? It gives you a reason to fight over and above anything else. Because now I'm representing the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. You know, and I've got brothers that depend on me. Recruits sign a blind faith commitment promising unquestioning loyalty to the Brotherhood for life. 
recruits are lining up to join the ABT in alarming numbers. Watchdog groups like the Anti-Defamation League monitor racist activity and are working to understand the growth of racist prison gangs. Because the gangs guard membership information, exact numbers cannot be known. But it is believed that one in every 10 inmates in the US is affiliated with a racist prison gang. Several things are fueling the growth. Success breeds success in some respects. So if, if these gangs are perceived as respected um, in the prisons, they can attract more recruits. Um, the fact that these gangs basically deal in meth um, makes them very attractive to parts of the country where meth is increasingly becoming the drug of choice. And so they can cook and sell and distribute meth. Uh, they get more followers that way as well. People kind of want to get in on the action. But the ABT doesn't accept everyone. Those who don't make it often join Texas's second largest white prison gang, the Aryan Circle, whose violence rivals that of the ABT. But unlike the ABT, which puts profit over ideology, the Aryan Circle claims to promote white pride and separatism as its top values. Greg Freeman, the leader of the Aryan Circle, has been in prison for 15 years, serving time for a murder he committed when he was 16. We believe in uh, separatism. We have the right to an, an identity that we shouldn't be shamed for it, shouldn't be guilty for being white. We believe in the preservation of our, our heritage, our culture, our traditions, and we want to uh, make sure they stay. Freeman joined the Aryan Circle after entering prison. When people come to prison, as soon as they come here, the, the racial lines are drawn. There, there is no, I'm not going to acknowledge my race. If you're black, you're immediately going to the black side of the, the unit. You're segregate yourself. It's a, it's a natural segregation in the world. You don't have to because you can, you can duck and dodge and do your own thing. But in here, you're forced to deal with it. He was attracted to the Aryan Circle's white separatist beliefs over the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, who will work with other races if it means making money. It's almost a crime to have an identity if you're white in, in the free world. It's, it's really a simple matter that, as a race, our numbers are dwindling. We're going to be extinct for too long. Not my lifetime, maybe not my grandson, but it's, it's coming. Unlike the male-dominated ABT, the Aryan Circle sells itself not as a brotherhood, but as a family that includes female members. Cheryl Buchanan, also known as Wicked, is one of four board members of the Aryan Circle. She oversees all Texas Aryan Circle members in the free world. Wicked keeps the gang's secret paperwork and controls the flow of communication from leaders in prison to soldiers on the outside. I just have a lot of letters. They're from the federal penitentiary. They're from the Texas prison system. They're from the free world. They're from the out of state. Her fiance, Brett Gregory, is also a member. We are the, probably the most organized white group both inside and outside the penitentiary. We are individuals with uh, white separate ideas and values. We are for the betterment and the procreation of the white race and for uh, family. Both Wicked and Gregory have done their own time in prison. I got busted with co uh, heroin, cocaine, and uh, methamphetamine. Gregory was 18 when he was incarcerated. He credits prison with forging his white supremacist beliefs. You know, you go to the penitentiary and you pick a side, and that is the side that you were stuck with. And a lot of whites, you know, they, they, don't, they don't have really a choice, you know. You have to, you know, represent yourself uh, and, or it's going to be bad. Wicked and Brett are passing their white supremacist ideals to their children. Hitler. Good boy. They've even named their dog after one of their heroes. Uh, he's really gentle. He's a loving dog. Hitler, come here. The couple claim they are now working to change the violent and criminal image of the Aryan Circle. We believe in uh, being a positive, protective members of society. 
you know, sticking with our own race and teaching people to live healthy lives outside the walls. Though the Aryan Circle professes to no longer being a criminal organization, Deputy Mike Squires is skeptical. I really don't buy it because, uh, you know, hey, if, if AC wants to get out of the game of being a criminal group, hey, I'm all for it. <laughs> but do I really think that's going to happen? No, I don't. Either way, the mainstream message of the Aryan Circle is only fueling its growth in membership. And Thompson, of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas, is looking to copy that success. Now, his faction of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas is trying to distance itself from the brutal history of the gang. The savage and sometimes random killings, the wholesale trafficking and abuse of methamphetamine. Thompson claims he wants to take over the gang to push the ABT away from illicit drug trafficking and into the mainstream. After making a lifelong commitment to the Brotherhood, quitting wasn't an option. So the only option I had was, you know, go to the top and change it. Instead of pushing drugs, they'll sell ABT merchandise. I have projects that I'm going to push into it, which is the clothing line, jewelry. The legitimate business is just as best we can, manufacturing T-shirts, selling prints. It's a way to keep the money flowing in without being bothered by the police. I can venture out into uh, roofing, plumbing, anything that a bro's got a talent at doing, I can build a business around him. He can own that business in a certain amount of time, and then he can pay a due to the corporation. The ABT captain, known as Peanut, is the new model gang member. I'm in the process of learning how to be a crane operator, and and I'm strictly legit, legitimate. I mean, I, I don't do drugs no more. I'm clean. I own my own house. I've only been out about nine months, and I've already bought my own house, bought my own car. I mean, got a good job. Mm -hmm. The next move in Thompson's power struggle is to stage a very corporate-style coup. They trademark the name and symbol of the Aryan Brotherhood of Texas. The white supremacist hate gang has become a brand. If and when the ABT ever goes fully legitimate, it will still be an all-white, closed society. But the ABT has always been driven more by money than by principle. Who invented the telephone? Who invented the automobile? Who invented the airplane? Who invented the computer? Who invented electricity? All the major inventions of the world, who created them? Where'd they come from? Come from a white person. And law enforcement welcomes the new public face of the ABT. There's increased watching their activities. There's increased prosecution. They basically put themselves in a position where uh, law enforcement has the ability to strike a final blow. For Thompson, that still seems a long way off. Two days after the taping of this interview, he gets some very good news. Facing 20 years on a charge of witness tampering through a letter he sent from jail, he receives 18 months in prison. With time already served, James Thompson may be free in as little as one year, and he'll have no more restraint. All that remains to be seen is in what direction his ambitions lie. Well, I think the only way they can stop me is keeping me in here. Because I think once I'm on the outside and I can move around and do what I need to do and work and, and put things in place, I don't believe there's no stopping me. I believe that with all my heart.